The SNP steals English taxpayers' money. Nicola Sturgeon wants to ban Donald Trump from Scotland. And the BBC introduce a new dictatorship. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the day. As you know, politicians and all political parties currently in this country are all over the place, incompetent, chaotic. But if there's one group that's extremely shameless and with a lack of principle and lack of self-awareness is the Scottish Nationalist Party and Nicola Sturgeon's minions. These guys who've been running Scotland for a long time have no idea about the actual damage that they've done to that part of the union uh, because all they care about is their weird socialist agenda of isolating the you know part of the country and then giving it to Brussels instead. Now as you know uh, the Scottish government uh, rely a lot on the money that they get from Westminster from the British taxpayers you know from England, Northern Ireland and Wales but primarily the Treasury's budget is funded the majority of it by the English taxpayers money. And so we, we've been obviously supporting uh, um, the Scottish government for a long time. Every now and then they uh, come and beg for more money, just like Sadiq Khan in London and Westminster. Just give it to them. And because this is what they're doing to protect the union, to keep them happy. In the, uh, and But what, what are they doing with this money? Are they actually spending it on Scottish people? Well, we'll find out. Because we've just heard in the Scottish Daily Mail that the £19 billion pounds has now been confirmed. That's been sent from London to, uh, to Scotland, to the Scottish government, to be spent on ordinary people across the country. Now, the problem is that, so firstly, the, the figures do indicate that more than six billion has already been spent on the job retention scheme, the furlough, and also the self-employment income support scheme in Scotland. And a further 580 million pounds has also been used to uplift the payments made through the welfare system. And the Scottish Conservatives have come out to uh, say that uh, you know this is the benefit of being part of the union uh, by you know providing all these uh, regular supports from Westminster and Her Majesty's Treasury, and uh, but you know the point is for years and years they've been running Scotland. The education system is in a mess. The healthcare system is in a mess. Uh, ordinary people unemployment still going up, you know despite the current situation, and the budget is a mess. I have no idea what they're doing because every time they ask for the maximum of the money, Westminster give it to them, they don't actually spend it. It happened recently as well, back in June, when uh, there was the latest financial package that was given to them. They underspent the budget by £250 million pounds that could have been spent on their childcare and their schools and everything else that they've been having as problems. It keeps happening. It's not a uh, kind of rare situation and this £19 billion pounds, I promise you, not the whole thing. The whole thing is not going to be spent, and you'll find out in the next few months. Uh, so the late, back in June, uh, the uh, finance secretary, Kate Forbes, told the, uh, the MPs in the Scottish um, government, uh, Parliament that the provisional uh, outturn figures for the 1920 showed a provisional fiscal outturn of £34.4 billion against a budget of around £34.6 billion. Uh, so that was basically about £258 million. Uh, that was a result in terms of the gap. And the Conservatives uh, in Scotland have now said that it still remained a huge figure and questioned why the SNP was now demanding more borrowing powers from Westminster when it was underspending and not using its borrowing powers in full. Well, exactly, what are they doing with the, uh, the money? But I, there are a lot of speculations. A lot of people are saying that this fantasy idea of uh, Scotland becoming an isolated nation and then giving it to Brussels instead. Their plan is they've been <laughs> keeping all this money in, in their treasury in Scotland uh, so that you know, when they become independent from, in their, you know, from their perspective, that they have more money. Well, you can't take the money from London, from the, the cross Britain, Northern Ireland, Wales, and especially England, as I said, the majority comes from England, and they just keep it for when you become independent. You don't even have any plans for what sort of currency you want to use. You can't keep sterling. You can't just keep going with the uh, idiotic 2014 uh, lines that you've been using. You lost the referendum. Move on. But this is going to happen again. 19 billion pounds, we have to wait. But they have different priorities right now. Nicola Sturgeon is now too focused on banning Donald Trump from coming to Scotland to play golf. Yeah. Don't worry about the Scottish people. Don't worry about the financial situation. Schools, you know, 
hospitals. Now, let's just, you know, focus on banning Donald Trump from playing golf in Scotland. Uh, she spent a lot of time just randomly attacking leaders for no reason. She just did this um, yesterday, I believe, uh, attacking, actually it was this morning, uh, attacking Boris Johnson, because Boris Johnson said that if you were up to uh, the Scottish government on their own, then this whole operation with Pfizer and Oxford would not happen. You know, it's only happening because of the union, because of the way uh, the government has been acting for everybody else. And she came out to attack Boris Johnson on Good Morning Britain on ITV. Now, Kate Garraway was actually um, hosting it, and uh, she completely destroyed Nicola Sturgeon's argument because... Uh, so what she actually said was she exposed Sturgeon's hypocrisy in terms of when she's pro uh, or, or anti-union, you know, when it suits her. So Kate said that um, you're for the union when it works for you and not necessarily all, uh, at all times. I guess that's the point he's making, isn't it? And uh, Nicholas Sturgeon came back with uh, the point I was going to make is that it works for all of us. The independent countries of the European Union pull together to deal with certain things. That's sensible. Are you joking me? The independent countries of the European Union, firstly, that's not a thing. You've got, you got members of the European Union, and then you've got independent countries outside of the European Union. Secondly, the EU27 member states, they can't, they can't do anything. You've seen what they did with the, the emergency, the financial package, the European budget. For the past, how long has it been now? I think it's been like nine months that they've been arguing. Uh, they can't even sort that out. They don't know what to do with Pfizer. They don't know how to have the operation properly. They can't manage anything. Now she's saying that, oh, well, Europeans have Zoom meetings. They have a lot of Zoom meetings. Macron and Merkel have tea on Zoom. So that means they're so united. No, that's just absolutely nonsense. Then she continues by saying, the point I was going to make is if Scotland was independent, were independent, when Scotland is independent, now she said, uh, as I think it will be, there are certain things that it will still make sense to come together to do. Oh, really? Like the currency? You still want to have access to our currency? Oh, sure. This is Nicola Sturgeon. Now, the BBC, who've been quite cautious because they don't want to anger the SNP activists and supporters too much, um, for the past few months, they've been very friendly towards them. They're doing something very, very idiotic right now. <laughs> They're going to uh, put uh, electronic tags on their employees. It, uh, okay, so this is a genuinely a new dictatorship regime if you work for the BBC. Uh, so what they're planning to do is uh, they're going to do these tags. Everyone's going to wear a tag so that it, you will maintain social, exercise social distancing. So I'm guessing, well, if you, if you get close to someone, it's going to beep. And is it, does he have electric shock? Is, is he going to, he's just going to pass out? <laughs> Are you going to get arrested? Uh, that, and also, they're going to do um, regular testing. So twice a week, every member of staff in the BBC will be tested. And considering the BBC currently hire about 75 billion people who work for the BBC, that's the real figure, 75. <laughs> they have a lot of people. Twice a week. Do you know what's going to happen to the number of cases? <laughs> so, and also the inconvenient. And it, 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 it's so counterproductive because any test that's positive, even if it's false, they're going to have to go home. They can't work. So the whole building will be empty. It makes no sense. So why are you doing the tags? The BBC have gone completely crazy. And, uh, but it's fine because they really care about education. Because schools are closed and they want to educate children. They have this new program uh, where... Uh, they're going to spend the whole day teaching kids how to be woke, I guess. Uh, but we have this spoof <laughs> meme of the schedule. It's quite good. So, uh, 9 a.m., politics. Uh, you'll be taught by uh, Owen Jones. 10 a.m., if you want to learn science, Greta Thunberg will teach you science. 11 a.m., maths with Diane Abbott. 1 p.m., British history with Giva Hofstadt. 2 p.m., <laughs> Are <laughs> Yeah, so religious uh, studies as well with uh, Jeremy Corbyn and 204. So that, that one is only four minutes. <laughs> That's only four minutes. And then 204 two p.m. British royalty with Meghan Markle. I genuinely, I, I really wish this was true. I, I, really, I would actually watch it. I would spend the whole day just watching that. It's the best thing ever. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not because the BBC have just um, appointed a new chairman, a new 
sound German is a is a, is a skeptic. It's not it's not one of them. And considering Tim Davy has been very disappointing since he's uh, been put in charge, the new BBC chairman uh, is going to be Richard Sharp. He's uh, he's quite right wing. He's, he's not really pro BBC in that sense. He's uh, he's got connections to Richard Sunak, the Tory Party. I know it's, there's a bit of nepotism ish. Uh, is going on with the, the Tory donors and all that, but um, he's got a good background. So, depending on how he was actually uh, picked, if it was based on merit, then well done. All I care about is action. Some people are kicking off. Alistair Campbell is not happy. He tweeted, So the march to the moneyed right goes on a. Okay, so he's starting a rant about this new chairman, uh, saying that you know, ex Goldman Sachs boss connected to Rishi Sunak, anti-public service contingent really are getting all their people on the inside now. Trump and Orban, watch on... I don't know what's going on there, but yeah. So there are two replies, lefties and Ramonas. This Caroline Cherry person saying that it's the speed with which they've done it. Star contract... No, it wasn't that quick. They've been talking about the, the appointing a new chairman for ages. It's not that quick. It's not like it happened in a half an hour. Jake James with the hashtag FPVP uh, in his bio says, yet yeah, more Tory uh, democracy. Uh, democracy. Uh, new BBC chairman Richard Sharp has donated £400,000 to the Tory party. Y yeah. Okay, I don't know what to do with that. A lot of big business people donate to political parties. Are they not allowed to get top jobs? And this is not being appointed like political advisor. That's... That would have been a whole different game. But if he does a good job with the BBC, I'm going to support it. But at this point, I'm not hopeful anyway. So that's the latest from the BBC. But if these people care about the establishment and worry, being worried about the establishment, they won't be worried about the police. They're coming out again to tell people to go home. <laughs> the police have now been, they want to have powers to go around, tell people if they're walking around the streets, ask them why or why are you walking. Just go home. If you sit in a park, you're not allowed. It's just like back in April, all over again. Um, this is not going to go down well. And you have, I think, Northampton. Yes, Northampton uh, Police Force. Just tweeted this to boast. At 5 a.m., we stopped the car with four people in. Just going to McDonald's. Not from the same household. Four tickets have been issued. I'm not really sure what they're trying to do with this. You're just provoking people. So whether you're pro or anti these measures, whether you, you know, you, you I was going to say whether you care about people losing their lives or not, I'm guessing everyone is in favour of protecting lives, but in terms of the measures, pro-lockdown, anti-lockdown, there's a difference between politics of intention and outcome. Outcome matters more. So you know that these people, for example, there's four people in the car, since March, they've known that these measures are there, and the lockdown and everything else. Do you really think, now that you've given them tickets, they're now going to stop um, disobeying. They're not going to do illegal gatherings or seeing each other. They're still going to do it. And you, you're just going to provoke more people. Instead of doing this kind of scary dict 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 dictatorial thing that they do in Europe, it doesn't work in Britain. You know, you're just going to create more rebels. So just be slightly more well sane when it comes to dealing with these measures. And Because right now, all, the, all they look like is just stormtroopers. So stormtroopers in Northampton. Hello to you guys. <laughs> I, I, I there are a lot of police officers that actually watch this channel, and a couple of my friends are police officers. It's not about the individual officers; they're just doing their job. Firstly, it's the whole government, and then the, the police management, people at the top, and some some weird police officers. It's, it's the problem is just the way these measures are being um, enforced. It doesn't make any sense. It's not really about being pro or anti. It's just that you have to pick your battles. Uh, you know, when we have priorities in the country, London is still a risky place, thanks to Sadiq Khan and London Met. And, you know, these guys are stormtroopers going around Northampton, stopping people from going to McDonald's. <laughs> Young, healthy people. Yeah, so this is the latest that we have for you guys, but it's okay. Stay positive, stay sane. We're going to be fine. <laughs> and get your latest I Believe in Britain merchandise in the meantime. You've got the January sale, uh, the special discount. Use the code BREXIT10. The link is in the description. And become a member of the channel. We're going to do weekly video calls. We've been doing them during the Christmas period. And we're going to obviously get permanent discount merchandise if you become a member. Members Q&A as well. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC, And I'll see you guys in the next video.